Hey guys, stop whatever you're doing and go download the beta for Java Aspects 5.0.0, which is in the description and available right now. You could be playing with all the new features that I've been showing in these devlogs over the past three months and teasing on Twitter and that you've been waiting for so impatiently. Now you can download and test them out and try it for yourself in your own world. The download link is in the description. Tell me what you think. Report all the bugs you find to me on Twitter or this comment section, and especially I'm looking for comments about how the performance in menus works and on servers, and I especially want mobile players to tell me how it's going. But now let's talk about what the heck took so long between videos. I mean, come on, the last devlog I uploaded was in August. The beginning of August, August 10th, what the heck? So for starters, school came back and it took away a lot of my free time, naturally. Some whole weeks have gone by without any progress on aspects just because I had no time to work on it. Luckily, I think I'm out of the worst of that now. I've been getting a lot more free time. I mean, half of it's just because I've been sick, but also just less homework in general after the first few weeks. And another contributor to this horrible length extension was there were way more issues in aspects than I was expecting, and each issue took time to fix. I also added one slash two big new features, or like rewrites of features, that took way longer than I probably should have spent, and we'll go into those later. But first off, let's talk about some small things. I fixed hotbar HUD text and jukebox text again. For some reason, the devs changed how it worked completely in a new update, so I had to make it work with it again. But merging Lucas's UI code with the new code was hard. I did it though. Also, I got drowned fixed for real this time. Now their arms go up all the time, whether they're swimming or on land, and I gave up on implementing multi-pixels drowned because I just couldn't get it to work, so instead I did it myself. And mine is actually more close to Java's than multi-pixels now anyway, because the trident brandishing animation is also added where they hold it behind their head when they're throwing it instead of beside it. And a million other little bugs got fixed, like I redid some sounds to use a new weight system, I removed unused files, I made chest particles perfectly square, I made vindicators and zombie villagers hold offhand items correctly, and way more little things like that. Now let's talk about the two big new features or feature rewrites that contributed to the long delay. One, the smaller one, Java Edition durability bars, and two, the much, much bigger one, Java Edition held item poses. The durability bars are a feature from Lucas's Java Parity Pack that I originally planned to have in this update when merging all of Lucas's pack, but then after I decided not to merge all of Lucas's pack in this update, I pushed the durability bar feature into the future after this update went out because I wanted to get it done as quickly as possible, which <laughs> as if there was any chance of that. But then, when I was working on fixing bugs for Java aspects, I noticed that durability bars were rendering behind items in the hotbar for absolutely no reason that I could figure out. So I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna implement Lucas's durability bar system and hope that it fixes the problem. So I did that, and it really did fix it, but implementing the system was a lot of work. For starters, I wanted to change a few things to optimize it as normal, and I struggled with that, but then I got it working, and now it's good, and all the hotbar works. But as an added bonus of this extra time, you can now see durability bars in creative mode, and also their colors match Java Edition. The much bigger time sink for this update was item poses. Item poses? Really, Agent? That's what took you so long. Holding items in your hand? Yes. In previous Java Aspects versions, I had this kind of disgusting code spread across multiple animations to make a few items align correctly in your hand when you're holding it. The code was pretty much unreadable, but I had to deal with it in this update because I needed to add first-person item positions from Multipixel for the Spyglass, Crossbow, and Trident. If I left that old item pose code in the pack, it would mess with those first person animations and it wouldn't look correct. So I set out to redo the item pose code in a much better way. Basically, I gave each item its own animation separate from all the other items 
so you don't have to read through a horrible query mess to find which values to edit. This makes it a lot more readable, for starters, and also means that you can expand the item poses to literally any item in the game. I can make apples hold on your head. I can make pointed dripstone held upside down on the bottom of your feet. I don't know. I can do whatever I want with it. <laughs> That's the advantage of the new system. The previous Java aspects also only made swords, crossbows, and shields pose correctly, but in this update I wanted to do better. For starters, I wanted to make 2D items pose correctly, which are like, you know, nautilus shells and fireworks and torches, everything that holds 2D in your hand, which I did. Also for the offhand. Keep in mind, every one of these animations also has an offhand animation. Then I created animations for swords and crossbows in both main and offhands. And side note, you'll only ever see these offhand animations through file editing because you can't hold perpendicular items or crossbows in your left hand by default in Bedrock Edition. But then I decided I needed to make fishing rods pose correctly too because that's a feature that was in Java Aspects before that sort of, that the eventually stopped working over time, and I wanted to bring it back and make it better, so I added it. And so at this point, I'm at eight separate item pose animations, which have all been very boring to work on, four for each hand. Not to mention, spyglasses, shields, bows, and tridents also have their own positions in their own files that I also had to work on. Thankfully, Multipixel's trident position was perfect already, and the spyglass was almost perfect, so I didn't need to do much to those, but the shield and bow were two more animations for me to make. Then I went and added the first person animations from Multipixel, which also had their own issues, but we're not even going to get into those. And then, now that I have my system quote-unquote fully implemented, I found a ton of bugs. For starters, when mobs like zombies would hold their arms up to walk toward you, the trident would flip upside down because when a drowned is attacking you with a trident, they kind of hold it behind their head and it flips upside down, but that's not right for a normal zombie who is not doing that. So I had to go and make an animation to unflip the trident when it is in the hand of an attacking mob that isn't a drowned. Some mobs also had their arms go funny when holding a trident, like it would go down 80 degrees for absolutely no reason, so I had to counteract that with another animation. Then Vex have a held item that works totally differently from other mobs for some reason, so I had to give them their completely own item pose so we can add another one to the item pose count. We're up to 11 if you've been keeping track. Then Vindicators needed an extra animation controller for themselves because the item they're holding wasn't disappearing when they weren't angry for some reason. Then I noticed that Totems of Undying, when you hold them in the offhand, were posed differently by default, so I had to add an animation to counter that. That's 12, and to top it all off, the player.entity.json file can't be used in a resource pack without breaking the skin creator skins. They will all look like Steve if you have that file in your pack, for some reason. I don't know. By the way, RainVazyCYF, or ZooChenYunFei, whatever, thank you for pointing this out, or I would never have figured out that problem. So the solution was to smash all of the item pose code into one animation for the player so that I don't have to touch the entity file. That meant that I have this one animation now with 908 queries in it. I feel kind of bad for the Minecraft UI system. However, it doesn't actually seem that laggy, so I think it's fine. And keep in mind, out of these bugs that I've talked about, there are a bunch I haven't even mentioned because I forgot about them or I don't have time to talk about them. I stopped recording my progress on the item poses around the time I finished the fishing rod animation because I already had hours and hours of footage of it that I was never going to use. So in short, item poses took a long time to make. Now they're done. With the exception of pointed dripstone, which I decided not to worry about until next update because I don't think anybody wants to wait an extra week just so pointed dripstone looks a little better when you hold it, but yes, it does have its own item pose on Java Edition. Why, I don't know. Everything else is sort of a blur because it went so quickly after I had the item poses done. Basically, please try the new beta of Java Aspects in the description. Everything in it is done except for the change log in the custom tab. So unless bugs get reported, this is how it will release. Let me know any bugs you find because that will make the released pack better. All the pack documents and the files are up to date, so if you want a full changelog, just go to the pack files or unzip it or something, and you can get to the changelog. 
the credits in the in-game custom tab are also updated, so thanks to everybody who contributed things this update, and especially thanks to RainVayZCYF for testing an early version of the pack for multi-pixel compatibility. Other news sort of related, I mentioned last episode that I was working on an update for Marketplace Hider that I hadn't released yet, that is out now, it is also linked in the description, if you don't like the Marketplace, download that pack and you can hide it, it also hides all the purchase buttons, so like if a server sends you to the Marketplace you can no longer buy something. Uh, and I also released an update to Beta Hider between the last devlog and now, which adds Bedrock's new Halloween panorama, so if you want to have that Halloween panorama while it's still relevant, download that. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching, thank you for being so patient and waiting for this Java Aspects update over the months and months since I kept delaying it and saying it would be done. Now it actually is almost done and I want you to test it. One sad casualty though that I haven't even mentioned yet is console aspects. Yes, I've decided to delay the console aspects update so that Java aspects can be out sooner. I don't really want to hold Java aspects back for no reason when I could be having its update out and then just work on console aspects later. And I know I said I wouldn't do this ever again after one update and I'm backpedaling, but I think it's better to get one version out in your hands as soon as possible than hold them back so that they can release together. Anyway, that is the end of this video. One more time. Download the beta in the description right now, test it out, report the bugs to me, and I will see you later.